to your blessings. And I'm going to consider today, the Lord wants us to consider today, three keys which we are going to talk about so that we can ensure that we are living to our full potential. Here is the thing about it. God wants to bless us. God wants to bless us. God wants us to live free, unencumbered with the snares of sin. God wants us to be living the fullness of our lives. You know, as parents, we said, we want our children to be doing the best. But God wants us also to be doing our best. You know, I was talking the other day to, to someone and said, you know, I'm starting my doctorate. I have a, I have a master's, I have, I have two masters, I have a bachelor's, I have two, two CPA and CGMA. And I said, I'm going for my, my doctorate. And the person asked, well, why? What? Are you looking for a higher position you're working? I said, no. I am setting the standards for my children. I am setting the standards for my children that they too, they want to do, I want them to do better than I am. Not when they reach to my age, I want them to do it now. And that's why we encourage them, we are behind them. We, we, you know, they don't, sometimes the kids don't even want, you know, you know the kids say, well, well, why don't get off my back? It's because we want you to succeed. Far beyond the reaches that we ourselves have ever succeeded. Isn't that as a parent that's what brings us joy? Isn't that as a parent that's what bring, makes us sleep well at night when we know our children is, is, is at peace and, and is doing well? When our children is, is upset and sick and, in, and overwhelmed, do we as a parents go to bed and sleep well? Oh no, we can that's when, that's when Christians begin to pray. That's when we get up and we come to the temple and we make night into day and we start to pray to the God because we know that God is able to deliver. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10, and I want to begin by, by reading verse 8 because you see, this is something that I want you to understand that that is the arrangement for God. And Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 10 and verse 8 said, At that time the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the ark of the Lord's covenant, to stand before God, to serve him, and to bless in his name as it is today. I want you to look at that scripture for a minute. God set up an arrangement. He set aside the Levites, the priests, to look after his people. He set aside the Levites and the Levites to bless his people. In other words, God has an arrangement where we can receive our blessings. He set up the arrangement. And I, I understand. What you said, well, I cannot be in the church because I live outside the city limits and there isn't a, a spiritual Sabbatarian church close by. I, you don't think that God understands that too? But if you are in the city limits, where there is a spiritual Sabbatarian church, you see, you need to be where God set up for us to receive our blessings. If you, turn, if you turn to Luke chapter 24 and verse 50, Luke chapter 24 and verse 60, 50, 50, you will see from then, then, I'm talking, he, Jesus Christ, led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. So even Jesus continued the practice of blessing people in the name of God the Father. Don't you see what, 
But it, do you understand when when we come to the temple and when we when we when those who are anointed to pray, the prayer warriors and the ministers who God has set aside to pray, and when they finish, they said, "Let us." Let us share the grace. Do you? do you know that that's a pronouncement of blessings that we are doing? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what, what, do you take that lightly? Mm -hmm. Because after we pray, and for someone, we pronounce a blessing upon them. Yes. And what do the person who is praying says, Amen. Meaning, I receive that blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God wants us to receive his blessing. We said, let's share the grace of the Almighty God, Yahweh, his son, Yahshua, the Messiah, and that of the Holy Spirit ever rest and abide upon you. May the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's a pronouncement of blessing. I was... I don't know if it's just recent, but I was, well, as I was coming into the temple this morning, I only, I, I, I tell you from my lips to God's ear, I only noticed it this morning. There is a, right at the door, at the trust of the door, in, not the main door, but the one that comes into the temple, the sanctuary itself. There is a sign. Does anyone, right over the door, does anybody remember what that sign says? Yeah. The, the, okay, there is one. That one is you onto will, the side. You will be blessed when you. Come you in. will be blessed when you come in and when you go, and when you go out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is on the right above the door to our temple. Mm -hmm. This is a reminder for us that we are entering a holy place where God's spirit resides, and if you want to be blessed. You better make sure that you find yourself when it is possible to be in the presence of the Lord, to be blessed. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. Let's begin from verse, I think it's verse 24. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Here is what here is what the Apostle Paul was reminding, reminding Christians about. And let us not be concerned, and let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works. 25. Not staying away from our meetings. In other words, not staying away from the South. As some habitually do but encouraging each other, and all the more as you see the day draw an end. Paul it was reminding Christians that let us not forsake, if you're reading the King James Version, the gathering of ourselves as some is accustomed to do. I preached a couple weeks ago, and I, and I tell you, if you are allowing someone, be it the pastor or the apostle, or worse of yet, me, keep you away from being in the presence of the Lord. The Bible has a, a name for you. You're foolish. Because you, as we said in, in, in the community, you are cutting off your nose to spoil your face. Not realizing that you do need a nose to breathe in air. You do need the hair within the nostril to catch all that dirt going in. You, you, don't think it's, you don't think it serves a purpose? Even the wax in our ear serves a purpose. You know, we, you, you know us, we want to be so clean, we're we we digging it out every time. We're digging it out. We're digging it out. But don't you know, Sam, you know, scientists tell us that the wax is there for a purpose? You know, God created the body. He created for a purpose. The ones in the north, the, north, the air in the north. Room. When you get old like me, you still pluck them out because they start to get gray. But they are there for a purpose. <laughs> it is there for a purpose. 
Even the eyebrow is there for a purpose. And the eyelashes are there for a purpose. To protect the eye. God is telling us that we should not forsake the gathering of ourselves. Because coming in here, not only do we, we come for ourselves, but we encourage one another. We encourage one another. So today, let us consider the first key to accessing or locking your blessing. And the first one is, be convinced that God wants to bless you. Be convinced. You see, you cannot access your blessing if you do not have faith. And what is faith? What is faith? Faith is the thing that we hope for. The evidence or the substance we have not yet seen. That is faith. Ironically, we have faith in we have faith in mankind more than we have faith in God. We drive down the highway at 75, 80 miles an hour. And another person is coming right next to us. And we have faith that the other person is not going to come over and hit us. A person that we don't know. A person who may not be serving God. But we have faith that that person is not going to come over and hit us. We are at the stop sign. And when it's green, we go. Even though we see a car coming. Because we have faith that he is going to see his room. The, the one that's coming in the, in the other that the other perpendicular, is going to see he has the red, and he's going to stop. <clears throat> we cross the street. When the, we cross the street, when this walk sign says, walk, seeing that car's coming, and we know we have faith that a person we don't know is going to stop, and he's going to hit that brakes, and that brakes is going to work, and he will stop. But yet, when it comes to having faith in the God who created all things, who created us, who is in charge of our lives, the head of our lives, the giver of all good things, we start to waver. <laughs> well, you know, I, mean, I have to go and do it myself. <laughs> you know, I have to work. <laughs> You know, Pastor Jonathan, you don't understand. You living in your ivory tower. You even you living in your ivory tower. And I said, where, where, where it is? I want to know where it is because I want to go inside and live in it. Put God first. Put Him to the test. Put God to the test. You have to be convinced. That God wants to bless you. And to do that, you have to exercise faith in God. I want to give, the, there is something, and I know many people says it, but I, I want to call this all by name. Apostle Barnabas, every time he begins to pray, this is, this is a part he always says. He always said, if the whole body was a mouth, it wouldn't be sufficient. To give God thanks for his blessing. Every time he prays, that part is always within us. If my whole body. In other words, he said, his mouth is not sufficient to give God thanks for the things that he's doing for us. Well, each one of us was brought, drove into this temple this morning. Without an accident, I'm assuming. I don't know, but I haven't seen or heard anything since I came. God brought us here safe. As a matter of fact, he brought us here safe and stuff. And when I pulled up, I thought I was at the BMW dealership. There were so many BMW parked outside, and I just had to add mine right next to the road. <laughs> there were just so many BMWs parked outside that I thought I was entering a BMW dealership. <laughs> And then when I come and saw, I saw Mercedes. Then when I come and saw, I saw Infinity. I, 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 I said, well, I, I, I mean, and then go 
God's. And then when I looked up, he says, when you walk inside of here, you'll be blessed. He said, when you're leaving outside, you will be blessed. And we are seeing the evidence of God's blessing. That's why, my brothers and sisters, if you are seen, if you are encumbered by sin, if you are encumbered by friends, if you are encumbered or held back because of something, it is time that you increase your faith in God to begin unlocking your blessing. Amen. Right in style. <laughs> I could imagine if, if someone was passing on the street. <clears throat> the only thing we were missing now is a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one. He's just not here. But he's somewhere else. Amen. But we have one too. My brothers and sisters, turn your Bibles to... <clears throat> To, to James chapter 4 because the question when it becomes, you said be convinced that God wants to bless you. How do you increase your faith? How do you do that? Because a lot of times people say, well just do that. Well how do you do that? Well let me, let me begin to tell you how you do that. <clears throat> let me begin to tell you. James chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 8. He says, James chapter 4 and verse 8. He says, draw not near to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he will draw near to you. To you. <laughs> you want to increase your faith? You want to, <clears throat> you want to increase your faith into some, in someone? Well, get to know that. Isn't that what isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we do when we want to get to know somebody? We draw close to them. Yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I don't want to miss my chair. <laughs> Thank you, Apostle and your brother. I want to acknowledge that my young, my young, I keep forgetting. The younger of the twin already got me my water since I came in. <laughs> oh yes, I want to acknowledge him. He quietly came to me and he said, Pastor Jonathan, give me some water. May God bless him. May God keep him. May God's spirit never depart from my soul. That's a pronouncement of a blessing Amen. on him. God said, we need to drop. If you want to increase your faith into somebody, if you want to love somebody more, young, not young one, all I want to. When you want to get the love and affection from somebody and when you're dating, don't you want to spend time with them? Uh -huh. Don't you want to take them out to fancy dinners and restaurants? Don't you, don't you spend a lot of time on the phone talking to them a whole bunch of nothing? <laughs> Just telling them how your day went and your night went and you had this and you had that and your that. Isn't that how you start to get close to someone? Mm -hmm. God said, draw close to me. And guess what you want to see? I will draw close to you too. That's how you <clears throat> increase your faith. Because as you start talking to the person, guess what? The love and affection start to build. Why? Remember Jesus said it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. You want to get to know someone? Start talking to them. Start engaging them. Start spending time with them. Don't ask them, do you smoke? No. Do you drink? No. Do you sit up? No. No, 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 no. You don't have to say anything. Just start talking a bunch of nonsense. Things about ordinary things, about the day. And hear what they have to say. How they, how they feel about the prayer. Do they go to church? You, you know, you said, oh, no, no, no. Sab Today's Sabbath, I'm going to church. So I, I have to see you after Sunday. I hear their reaction. You want to know what's in their heart? Because out of the abundance of the heart. You want to see, you want to see when, when you're passing, you're driving, and they see someone who is sick by the side of the road, or someone who is begging. Do they show empathy or sympathy? Do they want to bless? Uh, uh, let me call. Let me call that passage. 
Apostle Shepherd. You know, I, I, I take him my chances with him. He would, if he gets upset, he would just have to tell his wife. He wouldn't tell me now. <laughs> you know, one, when we was over in this location, over on the other side, and I think it was a feast, and he brought a bag. I think it was a feast for, for each family of the church, of the congregation. And as, as I was coming in with my family, he said, you know, Pastor Jonathan, this is for you and your family. And I said, I said for, for what? He says, no, just from us. It, it, it wasn't a part of a saraka or anything. He brought a bag with a lot of other things in it. Do you know that he was blessing my family? Do you know that in doing that, he himself, whether he realized it or not, or whatever the reasons he was doing it, that he was being blessed, his family was being blessed, he, that his Amen. children is going to be blessed? Amen. You want to get to a lot to access your blessing? Be convinced, deep in your faith, that God is ready to bless you. Amen. And the way you do that is by drawing close to God. But listen to the second part of that verse 8. Because there, there, there got to be something in it where you have to do as well. So you start to talk to God. And this is no fancy talk. Remember what I, the illustration I just gave you? You want to get to know this person? Just talk. How was your day? It's cold outside. It's, it's hot outside. It's hot in here. You just talk and get them to talk. And you will know. So you can talk to God anytime. Hear what he says in the second part of James. He said, cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your heart, double-minded people. Cleanse your heart. How do you do that? What are the things you think about? Do you think ill about people? That you want them to, you know, they, you, you, they, they, because they passed and they said something that you didn't like, you want them to die. You want to hit them. You wish that when they go out, they get in an accident, that they're mean. You know, do you have those type of feelings? I don't care who, what the person did to you. The Bible says in James chapter 4, in order for God to draw close to you, you got to start cleansing your life. Amen. <clears throat> oh God, I'm working so hard. I'm working so hard. I can't see my way. Day in, day out. What's that feeling up now? The pastor said, when he looked back at his life 12 years ago, or thereabout, he said, I can see God's blessing on my life. Amen. Today I have three sons. 12 years ago I didn't have it. Thank you. And I could even go farther and, and project what I think. Maybe he, was, maybe he did want all the time. But he waited. He never gave up hope. He testified. The reason why I could repeat it because he testified in the church. Did he? Who, who was here remembering? He said, 12 years ago, when I look back at my life, I can see the blessings of the Lord on my life. Amen. You know, many times we want something, we want it now. And, I, I, and I'm going to go fast because I don't want you to sleep on me. I really don't. And those of you at home, and whatever you have to do, don't put it aside. But I have to give you this, this illustration because this is absolute true illustration of my life. We were in Brampton, Ontario, and um, we, my wife was, was pregnant with the second girl, and, um, and we had to get a bigger place, we had a house. And we went, to, we went about, and we looked and looked, you know how when you're buying a home? And we settled, and what, I could never forget that house. 28th Saddle Tree Trail, Brampton, Ontario, Canada. And we thought, oh my God, this is a house for us. Pastor Junior should see this house. But you know, in Canada, they have basement, but the basement was not finished. And I said, okay, you know, after we moved in, I'm going to get someone, a builder to come, and we're going to put another bedroom downstairs and do this, and you know, all kind of things. And the day of closing, <laughs> guess what happened? So, I don't know, something, something went wrong and we couldn't close. <laughs> and I prayed to God. I didn't pray to God to deliver me, to give me a home. I, I, I prayed to God, I want that home, Society Tree Trail. I want that home. I want you to bless me with Society Tree Trail. Instead of asking God to bless me with a home, 
that will make my family be at love and peace. That is good for us. I was leaning on my own understanding. The very thing God tell me not to do. And we waited the day after, the day after, and it turned out the house was not going to be ours because some kind of technicality with the financing bank and all. And the people, because the day passed, the vendor of the home took, because they had multiple offers, they took some of the other. So you know how, how you how when you're all packed up to go to move into a house and then you couldn't go again. So we went down. And we thought, but God is not listening. What God doesn't want this family. And I kid you not, I'm testifying this to you to, to strengthen your belief. So my wife didn't want to go out. She was eight months pregnant. She didn't want to go back out again to start looking for a house. She said, You are the picky one. You go find a house and whatever it is is fine with me. I am the picky one. So I went, the, the real estate agent set up the evening. I come from what? He set up the evening for me to go and look for some home. And I kid you, the very first home we went, which is one street over the following week, named 32 Banner Road in Brampton, Ontario, one street over from Saddle Tree Trail, just came on the market when I reached in. I mean, everything was already done. They did renovation, the pit, the basement. You should see, the basement was nice, with nice bourbon carpet, a nice room down there with its own bathroom. He had a boss. You should see it. Laundry room, everything. So all we had to do was to just go and wash the bathrooms and, you know, disinfect the bathrooms. Who knew, who knew best, me or God? God knew us best. The 27th Psalm, I want to just pick it up very quickly because it tells us something that you and I need to do if for us to unlock our blessings. Amen. Psalm 27. The last, the last verse, 40. <clears throat> Psalm 27 and verse 40. Wait on Yahweh. Be courageous. Be of good courage, which means wait expectantly. <laughs> Let your heart be strong. In other words, he's saying, be of good courage. Let your heart be strong. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait. He, he started the last verse with the, with the same thing it ended, you know. He said, wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Your race is not, the, is, not to, is not against the neighbor. Your race of salvation is not a, who is running fast at the church. Your race, <laughs> Pastor June said, I don't, he didn't testify how long he waited, but he said he got three sons in 12 years. I don't know about him, but I see a great blessing from the Lord. Amen. Three sons after he waited on the Lord, be of good courage. Amen. So the first thing we have to do, if you want to access your blessing, strengthen your faith by drawing close to God. Amen. You draw close to God by reading his word. Amen. Coming to the temple, speaking to him in prayer. The second key to unlocking your blessing. Oh yes. Know what the blessing is. Do you know some people they pray for something is right in front of them and they can't they do they, they don't know what, they don't know when they have it. We're looking for something that God has already put in place right in front of us, but we're still looking for it because we have a concept of what is best for us. We said we're waiting for our mate. And God sent us a mate. But because the mate doesn't conform to the world definition of a good mate, we still there we still waiting on the Lord. We said we're waiting for a breakthrough in finance. And God is showing us how, what we need to do, 
how we need to get up and plan for it and walk through the door and we still sit down waiting for it. Let me tell you what the Hebrews, the ancient definition of a blessing is. Because sometimes we, we get a confused that we say we're waiting for our blessing. And the blessing is already happening in our lives. The first blessing, well, the first blessing we, we all got up here today. I am 99% sure that if each, any one of you that is in the temple here didn't have a meal this morning, probably we, we didn't want it or we were running late. But I am sure before you leave this temple here, you will have something to eat. Amen. And if any one of you need a meal inside of it, then I will give it to you. If, you don't, if there isn't something inside of there to eat. That's a, you take it for granted, but that's a blessing that not everybody has. Think about the blessings that bad news was not your portion where your children was concerned. As we know of today. We didn't get the call last night to hear that our children was in an accident. We didn't get when the apostle lead us into the prayers this morning. He said, let us pray for our children. <clears throat> that they would not be part. God said, you have to recognize the blessing. And here is what the ancient definition of the blessing was. There were three things. In the ancient time, you were anointed to win. Whether it's a battle, a physical battle, or whether it's a battle in your personal life, you were anointed to win. The second thing was you were empowered to overcome. And I'm going to go back to that one. And the third thing was the blessed is impossible to come. You know, somebody said, oh, well, I, 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 want, I want to hide this blessing because I don't want somebody snatches from you. What God bless no man can curse. That's why when you stand up to give your testimony, you have to do it. You have to do it with power and might. Because even the jealousy eye of anyone who is listening to your testimony cannot take it away what Amen. God has given to you. God is not saying that when he blesses you, you are not going to face challenges. God's blessing is going to empower you to overcome. He will give you the strength to endure. He will give you the faith to keep on hoping expectantly. He will give you the strength. That is what God's blessing looks like upon your life. Man. When you look back and you say, I wonder how did I get over this period of my life? Do you ever turn to your mate or to your, your family and say, you remember when we were like this? When we started to quarrel over that thing and you look back at this insignificant thing now? <laughs> Boy, I thought we were going to break up and look at where we are today. You think it's your mind? It is God that carried you through. Amen. I can testify to you that in 2013, I was, I didn't say, no, I had cancer. I was rushed to the hospital, bleeding from every part of my body. From 2013, when I reached renal cancer, the right kidney. I couldn't breathe. Everybody around me started to cry. The wife started to call, they cried. The brother started to cry. Everybody, nobody was saying, was holding up. Because they had the word cancer. And after that, for one year and change, I couldn't work. I'm going to hold God's words up when I testify to tell you. Remember I tell you, one year, I couldn't work. And I hold up God's word to testify to you, to tell you that not one day has passed when my family didn't have a meal. Amen. We never fell behind on the mortgage payment. And just remember, I had an 8-year-old, an 11-year-old, 
and my wife who did not work outside of the home. I was the only breadwinner of the home. And I, and I was sick with cancer. Can't walk. We need help to get around. For one year, when I looked up, and I'm not a millionaire, so let's take that out of it. Let's take that out of your thought. Did I tell you? Did, did I say to you? We never miss a mortgage payment. And we always have food for over not 10 days, not a week. I spent weeks in hospital, and when I come home, you know, you have to still have to go back and retain it. Isn't it the blessings of God? Do you know what blessings look like in your life? Because if you recognize it, guess what you're going to start to say? Thank you. That's what you're going to start saying. Ironically, we say to mankind all the time, you know, try it if you think I'm kidding you. Get on the phone to someone, and you said, or, 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 or you, said, you said to someone, I'm, I'm really, someone that you know, probably most likely, and you said, I'm really shocked. Could you lend me $20? And the person said, I don't have change, but I'll bring it to you tomorrow. What's the first thing you're going to say after the person promised to give you it in the future? You said, thank you. You get it yet, you know. But isn't that fair that you just exercise it in a, in a human who could be gone tomorrow, who could change his or her mind? But yet we say thank you. But God, when we have the faith in God, the, effort, the substance of, the, of what we hope for, the evidence we see for, we should start thanking God. Amen. I know I'm, I was late this morning and I didn't, get the, I, I didn't get the praise and worship, but isn't that part of the praise and worship is, is, to, is to thank God? Amen. Every part of the service is important because it was marked for our benefits. Amen. Every part of the service it was marked for our benefits and edification and for our blessing. Every minute we spend in the temple is a minute of blessings that we receive from God. Amen. Let God, Psalms 125. Psalm 125. tells us something that we need to remember. It begins by saying, Psalms 125, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. It remains forever. Verse 2. He said, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about who? His, His people. people. Amen. Amen. From henceforth and even from evermore. Amen. When God, when you stand with God, God gives you a shield of protection Amen. and blessings upon your life. Amen. 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 He went on to tell us in verse 3, he said, the scepter of the wicked, the rod of the wicked will not remain over the lot of the righteous. He didn't say that we wouldn't be bruised. We are living in an imperfect world. He didn't say that we wouldn't be hampered. The apostle tell us, pray against every male in the, in the in the temple, in the ministry, against sickle, sickness, and convalescence, crippleness, disability. The Bible, this is something the Bible gives us a show. He said it will not rest. So is life going to push you down sometimes? Yes, it will. But guess what God's blessing does? It strengthens you together. Okay. Amen. And continue the walk. That's what it means when it said the blessing is empowered, empowers you to overcome. 
Oh, yes. There are times that we need the encouragement from each other. A couple of weeks ago after the Sabbath, I, we sat in the temple for probably for a good two hours, over an hour, definitely. I sat with my brother and two sisters, and we were just thanking Father Yahweh. And we were just talking about how God has been good to us in this temple. You know why? Because his spirit is in this temple. Man, God's spirit is in this temple. The apostle reminded me when I came to the Sabbath, I had to wear, you know, I couldn't walk properly. I had to wear something under my foot to keep up. And even then, I could only stand up for a short while. That was 2014. I couldn't do no West Indian thing. Which is to stand the ground when we dance. I am blessed. I am blessed. That's how the Caribbean people do it. We stand the ground because we say out of it is where the base comes from. The song is. So we stand. We stand. We march. And you see, but always ponging the ground. I couldn't do that. But isn't God's spirit? That's it. You remember I told you at the beginning? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 8. God appoints people in his house to pronounce blessing upon other people. Amen. Isn't it because of God's spirit in his house that today I could come back and <laughs> I could come back and do that? Could I have done those who were wrong for 2014? Could I have done it? No, no. Where did the healing came from? Right here. What you didn't know, I've gone to several doctors before. And they couldn't give me an answer. Oh, I took painkillers to help. But I was thankful to God that my job did not require me to be on my feet. As an accountant, I'm always sitting. Well, most of the time. So God, when you are blessed, you are given the empowerment Go back to Isaiah chapter 54 very quickly. And I think it's verse 17. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. You want to talk about when you are blessed? Here's God's assurance. Here's what God told the prophet, the prophet Isaiah to go and tell the king, the same king that God put on the throne that was wobbling in the face of danger. He says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Amen. 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 No weapon. And he said, every tongue that rise up in judgment of you, mm -hmm. guess what he says, shall be condemned. Amen. 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 This is the inheritance of the servants of God. Hallelujah. Draw close to God. This is the benefit. This is the blessings you got. You got protection. You got a warrior who is fighting that battle for you. Amen. Amen. You feeling downtrodden because something is getting you down? Draw close to God and let him do what he said. Make him a liar. Make God a liar. Draw close to him. Cleanse your heart of all evil thoughts and all evil being. And then put God to the test. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, as we sat in the temple thinking, and I thank Mother Magdalene, she says, I said, you know, I don't have a key to the temple. Because she said, you know what? I have an extra key. There is an extra key, Pastor Jenna. I said, thank you, Lord. So I could come in. Sometimes when nobody's there, when you feel overwhelmed, and you could come and prostrate yourself before the throne of God and cry out to God. Why? Because I want that person. The last thing. You still awake? Mm -hmm. let's, let's go to the last thing. The third thing. Position yourself. The third thing. Position yourself to receive God's blessing. What, what, does, it, what does it mean, position yourself? We talk a little bit about it. Positioning yourself means bring your life 
in accordance to God's will so that you could receive a blessing. Blessing is upon the chosen ones of God, the Amen. servants of God. Amen. You hear what Isaiah, Isaiah 54 and verse 17 said? No. That is the God, that, that protection, that, Amen. that promise is only given, that's a heritage. That's an inheritance you have of the servants of God. Amen. So if you are not being protected, it's not that God promise is not valid because he said nothing that he says is going to go out and go back what? Not fulfilled. It's because you are not. Your, your life is not in accordance with God's will. Which means Keep the Sabbath. The young, the young brother brings the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall work. Amen. And seven days. Keep the Sabbath holy. Try as hard as you can. And every day it's going to get a little easier. I understand. You don't think, remember, man wasn't made for this. The Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath, so all the, all the things that you're saying, Pastor Jonathan, don't understand. Well, it's not me to understand. But God knows. Because he made the Sabbath for us. And he created us. Mm -hmm. All of you have this BMW. When the when car thing, what's the best place to go back? I know they're quite, quite pricey when you go. You go back to the dealer. When something is really, really wrong with the car, most times you say, okay, the boy in the, the corner store, the corner garage, we made, let me go back to the dealer. They make the car. Mm -hmm. Who is best to fix it? Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh is best to fix it. Amen. <laughs> so the point is, you have to go back to the maker. Yes. Amen. Yes. God created us. Yes. He knows the trial. He knows the temptation. Mm -hmm. Jesus makes intercession. And you know what happened? Because Jesus knows the temptation. Because he lived through it. We can read about it. The three and a half years of his ministry that was captured in the beginning of the Gospels and talked about all throughout. That was foretold by the same Isaiah and Jeremiah some 700 years before. Jesus lived it, so he knows our cries and our troubles firsthand. One, he was there when the Father created us. Two, he came and lived amongst us. Mm -hmm. He knows what betrayal is. Cry out to him to make an intercession into his Father's kingdom to give you the strength to overcome. He knows what it means to labor. He knows what it is to be judged wrongly. He knows what it is to be incumbent. He knows what it is. You remember when the rich man came to him and tell him, okay, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. He said, go back, sell everything and give it to the poor and then come. <laughs> the rich man wasn't <laughs> expecting that answer. <laughs> The Bible said he turned back, he was sorrowful because he was a wealthy man. You know, the, Jesus was giving us, he said, Where, wherever your, your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. Yes, we are to enjoy nice things. Yes, we should be driving nice cars. But they must be subject to God's allegiance. My brothers and sisters, I pray today that whatever it is that is a challenge in your life, Amen. I'm here to tell you God can fix it. Amen. I'm here to tell you that the blessings, one of the three are basic blessings, the anointing to win, the empowerment to overcome, Amen. and the impossible to curse. Amen. That God could fix it. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you that the word of God said that God wants to fix it. That God has set up in his temple, in his church, an arrangement for it. 
You know, I tell people, you know, when, when church when church has to start to have meeting, I used to say, ah, I ain't taking part. I have enough sin to, to go to the Lord about me not taking on anymore. Mm -mm. Bible tells us very clearly, touch not who's God, but who's God is anointed to do his work. <laughs> if Apostle Shepherd is not doing what he's supposed to do and he's leading us to adoration in a different way, pray. Pray that God is going to reveal unto him the proper way. Don't take it into your hand. <laughs> Don't cause the anointed man. The Bible tells us that we should touch not those whose God has anointed. Whenever they, have, whenever they have a meeting and it's not about administrative subject, administrative subject might be whether we have a dinner or something, other than I said, uh -uh, I go on. Mm -mm, no, I don't want to take, I don't want to take no Oh no, I don't want to give my tithes my time because I don't know what uh, uh that's not my problem. The Bible tells me Malachi to bring it in, bring it into the church and then let them handle it. Mm -mm. Brothers and sisters, do you know that no, no. that Pastor Gio, the presiding minister? Apostle Shepherd. Don't you know that they too have an account to give unto God? The Bible says, Cause war unto them that gather my people and consciously lead them astray. They could never receive God's blessing if they consciously, knowingly lead us astray. Have faith in God. Bring your life in accordance to God's spirit, to God's will. By cleansing, drawing close to him, cleansing your heart, cleansing your actions, and see that the blessings of God upon your life and upon your children. May God grant you peace. Amen. May God grant you long life. Amen. May he bless your finances. Amen. May he prosper you amongst Amen. all men. Thank you. And may his spirit always be with you. Amen. From this time forth. Amen. Amen. Yeah.